All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the High School Esports League. We're getting ready to start off a varsity match for this weekend. Let's introduce ourselves and, of course, the teams as well. I'm Pyrotechnics, joined on the broadcast by Frosk. And how are you doing, Frosk? I'm good. It's been a while, Pyra. Yeah, just a little bit, hasn't it? Been uh, quite busy with all the other stuff we've had going on, but today is all about these two teams. A couple of high school titans taking each other on. I believe on the blue side we have Team FFX, or Roosevelt High, taking on uh, Ruby and Friends or Fleetwood Park. And uh, mm -hmm. quite different geographic locations. Yeah, one's a little hot, one's a little cold right about now. <laughs> Talk about British Columbia <laughs> versus Hawaii. So uh, as we get ready to get into Champ Select, we see what they do take off the board. Zillion Hacker and Band Away. Likewise, Kha'Zix and Zed taken off the board. So uh, Zed, pretty priority ban. Typically on purple side, it's almost that you ban Zillion, Maokai, and Alistar. A zillion go on a blue side tells me that that team just doesn't play it, which should give indication um, further down should purple team ever get to play this team again from the blue side that zillion would not be a priority. Mm, very true. Uh, also, Jax, a uh, bit of an unusual ban there actually uh, for the blue side right now, and I'm I'm not 100% sure if that's going to be targeted mm -hmm. over to uh, their opponents. I, I'm that's really I hard to say, say because these have been a little bit specific. I think these all have to be target bans primarily as opposed to just yeah. the general OP. But with first prick available for FFX, they do have a long list of quote-unquote overpower champions available to them. That's very true. Akali and Zed were taken off the table uh, over on the side of Ruby and Friends, so that does leave a lot up. We'll see what Justice War does go with. The teams should be in the correct orders, of course, too, but it doesn't necessarily mean they have to pick for each of their roles with that trade option still available. And again, these are the higher level varsity teams. Looks like it is be a Tristana first pick. So we are on patch 4.7. Tristana's Buster Shot cooldown was nerfed. So that is in effect. Likewise, on the other side, we were talking about Rise early and Rise being hovered over for uh, for Purple Team. Mm -hmm. It is a pretty contested pick lately. Uh, Nunu being considered as well. Uh, most likely jungle lockup as well there. And as they switch it over to Karma, you got to start to get a sense of what they go for. Do they do this karma in the mid lane or switch it up even further? No, well, they're really thinking about what they want to pick first. Rise, leaving them on the table would be dangerous, but Thresh does get locked in. So that will be the support pickup for the red team. A little bit dangerous to leave Rise on the table simply because he's going to synergize so well with Tristan and since they're both late game hyperscaling champions. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, he's hovering between they're really it. thinking about the top. Maokai, Rumble Aurelia, Rumble, and Rise are all available for the top lane currently. Mm-hmm. A lot of counterpicking available for once again. Uh, I think a jungle lock-in is probably a little bit smarter. And he do go over to Lee Sin at the very end, so that's going to be Buzzy Panda getting his Lee Sin pick up. What gets answered over on the side of FFX? I like the fact that Ruby and Friends didn't initially give away too much about their composition. You don't know if this is going to be a siege comp, if this is an early mid-game. Um, Thresh, of course, universal scaling, very utility-based, has a lot of uh, good things on that champion kit. Lee Sin going to be more early gear champion, but one of the strongest jungles since Kha'Zix has taken off the board. So I like that friends still kind of hid what their intentions are, despite, you know, knowing that, that rise pick. Bring a uh, Yasuo lock in so early, though, would be really, really sketch from FFX. Typically, this has to be like, I'm 100% confident in any matchup that I'm going to get. Yeah, and usually they like to save those mid picks for the last one. It is a little bit surprising to see it so early. Jarvan might be a little bit more likely, but... I think if I'm in FFX's position, I would want to maybe fill out my bot laner and maybe take one of those, you know, OP top laners to begin with. Of course, nobody really wants to take that top just yet, so looks like it is going to be Jarvan and Yasuo locked in. And we did see that Rise was hovered over. Of course, Rise has the flex that he can be played either in the mid or in the top lane, typically in the top. Uh, the Rise Yasuo matchup is very much in Rise's favor. It's hard for Yasuo to find a nice one wall to block the damage from Rise, and Rise is able to just lock him down he try to dash for those minion waves and be a nuisance. So, um, I kind of feel uh, Sandra. Mm. Mm. Sandra goes either way. It's true. They're really thinking about what they want to take in the top, though. There's a lot of hovers on that as well. Uh, and then back over to Oriana. This would be a pretty safe pick to deal with the Yasuo. Nonetheless, I feel like there are stronger counterpicking options available. Uh, they could just pick up Lucian right here and hide. Oh, I guess they're going to pick both their mid and their top lane. I was going to say they could pick up Lucian here and hide to make sure that they got the counter pick on the top lane since it hasn't been selected for FFX here. Uh, but it looks like they don't care. They're going to pick this blind. Or they don't want to allow Rise to go through because, again, the late game scaling from FFX 
Apex, having the Yasuo, having the Tristana, and then giving them also a rise on a third rotation would be pretty devastating. Yeah, there would be a lot of over, overly strong picks there on one side if they did allow it. So I think the rise is a must-takeaway at this point. The Orianna lock-in is interesting, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a, a really, really hard lane for the Yasuo either. It, it kind of comes down to a skill matchup, I think. It's not a counter pick. It's more so just like a place style matchup. So you have uh, an assassin that's going to try to go in. Yes, it can happen on Orianna. It's it's hard for Orianna to lane against the Yasuo just because she's a skill shot, low mobility based champion. It's easy for him to kind of dash around and, and like I said, be a vet, that nuisance. And she doesn't have any sort of burst damage where she can 100 to 0 someone. She's a, a sustained damage mage versus a burst damage mage like Syndra. Um, but it, again, it's just mm. the play style of saying I'm going to be that AoE wave clear utility style of team versus the assassin pick style of team yeah now we have this jace hover too we could see that going up in the top lane or we have yasuo heading up to the top yeah. so there are options right now for fx as they do get those lock-ins morgana also definitely gonna be the support player there and then of course our last ad carry pick will it be caitlin or will they uh, swap back into something else this would be a pretty good laning phase for ruby and friends i'm actually really surprised that they're not going to go for Lucian. I think it would really round out the power spikes, but it looks like they are going to lock in that Kaylee. It will be the Jace into the top lane, which I expected that it would be a counter pick against that Rise. Um, the Jace kind of doesn't make a lot of sense for me. It does give a proc ability to Yasuo ult, like way so does the Buster Shot and of course the Flag and Drag. So Yasuo has options there, but I don't know. I feel yeah, like it doesn't... Yeah, an interesting composition for both teams, to be honest. Uh, I'm... A little bit concerned for the red side, as you mentioned, just because they, they don't have their scaling right in order. But they do have a pretty scary late game. It's just a little bit of an odd one, because if you combine up like a Lee Sin kick with an Orianna Shockwave, it, it's kind of difficult to get people in the placement you want them to be exactly. I think they're going to have to rely on it to be sort of like Lee Sin going to initiate all the fights, and then they can maybe try to get a Shockwave off people jumping onto him. And of course... Caitlyn can be very punishing in lane. Um, it's just like Lucian is so the go-to against the Shasana because he's absolutely devastating and his synergy Thresh. Like the fact that now that we can talk about summoners because we're in the delay. Um, oh, actually, Thresh just switched last set to exhaust. Wow. So he was taking Ignite um, previously, and and you have to think when a Thresh grabs hold of you know a Morgana or a Tristana, though Morgana is the counter pick to Thresh. Uh, if he decides to go all in, Caitlyn doesn't really have any burst damage. She's a poke-based champion, whereas like Lucian, he has so much kill potential. So I feel like they kind of lost a bit with that with that synergy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is a little bit of an odd choice too, especially without uh, the gap closer as immediately available. I mean, it's an incredibly risky move to use Caitlyn's net to try and close a gap. <laughs> Caliber whereas, net in. <laughs> yeah, I have seen it happen. I've done it several times. Uh, yeah. It is a little bit curious. Over on the side of Ruby and Friends, too, the weakness not taking the teleport either uh, means that they're not going to necessarily have the map pressure that they need to go all out and maybe take a fast objective or force a dragon or something like that, whereas FFX is definitely going to have that going for them. I don't agree with taking Ignite on Rise. Like, obviously, this is him just flexing his yellow, the fact that he is the diamond one player and trying to make a carry position right there. Oh. But even save doesn't... Even save doesn't take the ignite on Rise just because a it's so important. Like Rise's early game is pretty much crippled on the fact that he needs to buy his tier as quickly as possible, and the early teleport, if timed correctly, can really give you a boost there. As opposed to running back and then missing a wave, especially against someone like Jace's wave clear because he has the two different cues to push waves. I'm talking about the the shock blast as well as the hammer switch. Um, so like mm -hmm. if Justice War plays this well enough, he could really deny a lot of farm early and punish that. That said, both these champions. I want to sit up in the in the lane and farm to their power specs, which are item dependent. You're talking about like the Muramana and the uh, the Rod of Ages, as well as the Nurse Embrace. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right. So as we've got about a minute left in the delay before the game is going to get underway, let's uh, let's talk predictions a little bit. Uh, we don't have to talk exactly <laughs> the the lane matchups. I feel like that's maybe a little bit passe, but. Where do you think Frost these two teams are going to do in the early game? I, I mean, it, it looks like there's some incentive for Ruby and friends to make some big plays early on, but without that teleport, I just don't see them uh, pushing any easy objectives. Um, it's all about the level set for FFX, blue side right here, simply because you're going to want to proc the Yasuo ultimate as soon as possible with the synergy between Jarvan and hopefully get like a... Uh, like. Yeah, it's just about using Jarvan either on mid lane or on bot lane to swing like a dragon fight. They have the teleport, so that's why I think the action will be. Otherwise... 
unless the junglers just walk into each other, it should be a pretty slow-paced game early. Well, you never know when you've got a Lee versus Jarvan matchup. Okay, so we're about to load up, guys. We will be taking a very quick commercial break, but before we go, I want to thank our wonderful sponsors, especially our Dogecoin, Ula, Sochain, Dogecoin Ball, Coin Ball, excuse me, and Coinplay IO. Guys, we'll be right back. But you are watching the High School Esports League here on Twitch TV HSEL One. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the High School Esports League. We have our varsity match for today. Over on the blue side is going to be FFX and their opponents. Up in the red, sporting those trunks, it's going to be Ruby and Friends, appropriately colored in red. How are you doing, Frostgren? I'm good. I'm a little sick, but otherwise I'm very excited to see the varsity level of these teams face off. Mm -hmm. A little bit higher ELO caps than our uh, previous match in the last week. As we do get the pause coming in, this talk is a time little to bit introduce more. The, uh, the players, actually. <laughs> yeah, why not? Let's do that. Okay, guys. For FFX, up in the top lane, we have Justice War in the jungle. TFT John. Third Illusion will be the mid laner. Clouds on the AD carry. And Sierra on support. And on the other side, Ruby and friends. Like you said, decked out in that purple. We have King in the top, of course, in the top lane. I'm going to mess this up. Fuzzy Panda in that the jungle on that Lee I tried really hard. In the mid lane, we got Pro 711 on Oriana. And then taking up the bot lane, it's going to be Fear My Level and Trank on Caitlyn and Thresh, respectively. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as you were saying. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and uh, once again, just uh, for you guys who want to get a little bit of geography lessons in okay. while you're playing, we'll be representing Roosevelt High School in Hawaii is going to be the blue side team. And of course, Fleetwood Park, British Columbia is the red side. So uh, a lot of... International matchup, you could say. I don't know, right? How many times do you get to face a high school across oceans? I wanted to say yeah, across know, continents, yeah. but then I thought about it. The map popped it's, up in my head. Uh, well, let's 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 not go let's not go that far, but we can <laughs> oh. go about halfway, right? Yep, halfway. Nope. Things all flying across the map right now oh. as they get ready to start. Uh, I don't think you can be everywhere at once, guys, but I do applaud the effort. I like to call that the four point. <laughs> um, How about a dozen, should... right? I know, right? They should just line up. Both teams have, you know, decent level ones. Caitlyn's level one is going to be stronger than Tristan, simply because she has the range. Um, likewise, let's see if she started Q. I haven't clicked on her yet. She has started Q, so also has that going for a Morgana Thresh, both powerful early game. So shouldn't see too many evades go across. Looks like it is going to be a bottom start from both junglers. Cover. Yeah. Fleetwood is making a few moves down to get a little bit of warding in that tri brush. You can see Fuzzy Panda popping down his trinket as uh, it's pretty much a dead giveaway that they're going to start the blue buff at this point. However, their opponents are also going to start their bottom side buffs with uh, TFT John making his move over to the red. 
<clears throat> looks like they will get a leash respectively from their bottom lanes, which typically we're starting to see more of the professional scene move away from this um, as teams are prioritizing letting their bot lanes getting like it's so important to get that level two, especially when you have the stronger lane to make sure that there's no reason for you to lose that. So shouldn't see them take too long here. Mm -hmm. uh, although this is going to be a nice and uh, old school standard. As you see everything getting ready to go, the two top laners hanging out in their brushes respectively as well. A little bit of guarding going on from Pro 711 as this game gets underway. So no invades, as you mentioned, a nice safe start. Wards abounding. And I think we can expect to see fairly standard matchups in these lanes as well. I, I want to give the advantage to Fleetwood in the level 1, level 2, just because you do have a Caitlyn that has that superior range. But you got to be really careful dealing with a Morgana and a Tristana. Um, I do want to talk about Pro a little bit right now in the mid lane. Oriana starting the Q. Yes, Oriana's auto attack was, I think the passive was nerfed probably a patch or maybe two patches ago. But typically, Oriana start E first especially when they're going up against a, um, an opponent who isn't ranged and they abuse with their auto attacks. So the fact that he started Q, I think, is a little suspect. Um, that said, I mean, it's not going to hurt him detrimentally, but he loses a lot of the aggression that he could have had on that Yasuo, especially before the Yasuo starts getting his dash. True that. Although, he uh, seems to be holding his own pretty well right now as uh, Fear My Level makes a move away from the Dark Binding. A little bit of pokes and slaps back and forth. The top lane, roughly the same as well. And there we go, both lanes getting the level 2 at the same time, so not a huge power spike swung. Swing and a miss, though, speaking of swung. Mm -hmm. Trank splits the uprights. He does get the fly off now, and Clouds is pretty low, but gets the shield out, not going to block that physical damage from Caitlyn. Still have to be extremely careful, and he walks right into the Piltover Peacemaker. He's not got the sustain to deal with it just yet, praying that he gets enough lifesteal out of that Doran's Blade. He's also lost all control of the Creep Wave, which means that... I actually fear my level's zoning this in, and meanwhile in the mid lane we do have Jarvan looking on the side for a gank. Mm-hmm, Pro does get knocked up. Teal Tempest, but uh, here he comes, double buff, Jarvan engaged, flag and drag over the Orianna, but she gets away just fine. Walking it out only takes a little bit of damage in the back of the head. And it looks like with that Fuzzy Panda is going to make the call to gank the top lane since he knows exactly where Jarvan is. Now remember, this is the lane where the Ignite bonus is on the side for red side. Uh, actually, yeah, it looks it's like dangerous, he's gonna... though. He thinks better I, of it. The thing is, is like the the lane should be warded because the trinket is actually available for Justice War, and you know that both bot lanes started, you know, the respective bottom side of the map. So you know, around three minutes, three thirty, they're gonna ha be double buffed up. Justice War actually going just, pretty hard. Oh wow, yeah, it was lucky positioning a minute ago, but now they trade each other pretty hard now with the uh, potions coming in. Flash forward, King of the Top gets the rune prison off, ignites down, and it's first blood. So that does get picked up by Fleetwood Park with an aggressive rise play. But now in the bottom lane, we do have Fear My Level running for his life. Yep, and he's taking quite a lot of damage from the auto attacks, but Trank is trying to keep this one up. Oh, Dark Binding comes in, Flay forward, and TFT John taking tower shots, but it's not enough to take him down. They answer back the revenge kill. It's only the first blood gold keeping Fleetwood Park in the lead right now. Good gank from Draven right there. Again, I want to talk about that top lane. There's no reason ever, especially for a Jace player, to go all in. He actually went all in on the creep wave as well when, uh, with a summoner disadvantage, the fact that he's playing against an Ignite. So that was just a mechanical misstep and, and faulty decision-making at that time. Absolutely. See if he's able There's to, no uh, need to do it. Exactly. And now it comes, is he able to punish with the teleport and get himself back into this game? Well, he should be able to. That teleport is, is such a valuable summoner spell, but you're right. There's no reason to take an aggressive stance that close, especially when you're on a champion with superior range like Jace. So uh, I think he didn't expect the Flash Ignite, to be honest, but that was just sort of the unpredictability of King of the Top, and that you know part of that's the ELO difference, you can see. Um, it does mean that they lose a lot of their strength on the top side jungle. We've already seen Panda making moves as far as counter juggling when he sees Jarvan on the map. We'll see if they're able to push that more, especially as second rotation buffs will come up. Since they know where the jungler started, they should be able to time that pretty effectively. Um, because they could make a play for a challenge and really start to snowball this top lead. I think that would probably be in the best interest, just considering, uh, where this rise is right now and how well he's able to bully Justice War. That is kind of their edge, and you can already see Fuzzy Panda making a move up to the top. There still is no ward down, so Justice has not been getting that. There goes the Q out there. He follows it on through. He's Rune so Prison flash. comes up. Oh, he's low, but it's not low enough. And uh, wow, down to the bot lane. Fear My Level nearly walks right into a Dark Binding. So these have just been, I think, good decisions from Fleetwood, just not stellar execution. 
Uh, yeah, I would agree with that. I will say that Justice Ward did a great job right there, of course, representing Roosevelt on the side, um, conserving his flash, knowing that he didn't need to burn that to save his life. So uh, his saving grace is the fact that his teleport and his flash are still available to him. So, yeah, he lost the first blood and he lost the exchange, but, um, I mean, he, he's still pretty in healthy standing. Still a level down, though, when you consider how King of the Top's got his ultimate now. This is just going to get worse yeah, and but worse he for him. He can make that up, especially because as he wants to clear this wave, like because he, he has the wants teleport, to go in it, on this. it pretty much gives him a free wave whenever he wants. Like I there's, know, I suppose he, it is hammer time. King, uh, King has less room for error because he doesn't have that teleport. I guess is what I'm trying to say, and likewise because he doesn't have his flash. It's a fair point. Uh, down in the bot lane, we haven't really talked too much about clouds since that gank really happened, but he has been very much down in CS. You have to expect this. Oh, he gets hooked in, though. Way too late. Does have to jump away. Spends the rocket. W on that one, but Fear My Level and Trank do take a bit of poke in return for it. So he has been holding out, but here comes DFT John, and he gets in there with the flag and drag. This is a lot of trouble right now. They should be able to answer back at least on a Thresh, but he flashes away from the Dark Bind, and they make their great escape, only burning a summoner to do so. Now it's about will they be able to punish the summoner, and speaking of punishing... <laughs> Panda. Oh, Panda just gonna let him walk away. Um, That's about the time you type in all chat. Uh, hey guys, <laughs> Lee Sin's uh, packing a tent up here. I was just gonna say, setting up camp? I would invite him to roast some s'mores. Mm. It looks like he's more interested in jungle camps right now, going back that way. But uh, talk about that value ward, too, that the blue side's put in there over by the Baron Pit. That uh, actually got walked right through by Fuzzy Panda, and we've seen even high-level junglers do this where they're so concentrated on the map that they just don't notice wards they walk through. They're typically not looking at their champion as he walks through the jungle. They're typically, you know, checking waves, checking on lanes, things like that. Could come back to Shopping bite them, for though. shoes. Yeah, yeah, some styling kicks. Let's see. Now, after King of the Top kind of made a little bit of a move away, Justice War has it's a little a bit of a coat. pushback. Uh, yeah, that is curious, actually. Frankly That's sent, one huh? word for it. <laughs> so is, uh, well, so is John, and he's, that's a little more reasonable, I think, even though I have seen the Lizard Elder build come out uh, for Jarvan as well. But yeah, very strange item prioritization for both these teams. You can see neither of them really have a true tank, but they're kind of trying to force that. Now, speaking of forcing something, Third Illusion goes in on Pro. I don't know if this is a smart move. Shockwave, he flashes away from it. But that's a summoner burn for an ultimate. Good trade for the red side. I'm trying to rationalize it. I think because Panda... Oh, hold on a second. Top, flashing forward. Yep, Justice War. He goes down. That's King in the top, and in a blink of an eye, takes himself his second kill of the game. Sitting on the Catalyst and the tier right now. He's got that hot 120 stacks up, but it ends up being Justice War who's crying. Didn't even burn his ignite on that, and unfortunately this Rise is only going to get stronger. Like You have to think that Rise is already dominating this lane with items that don't give him any battle stats. He effectively has some, I mean, like, Rise with his mana scaling, it's a little bit different than, you know, say, other champions that would pick up tiers, but it, it's not its not a huge power spike for him. So that's yeah, thats it, a little upsetting. It's troubling for FFX that they focus so much time and attention on the bot side, and here goes TFT John. He's ignited already, going down again, and he can't hold the lane, giving one more kill over to King in the top. And as we were just talking about, they prioritize the bot when they finally do make a move up towards the top lane. They really don't get anything done at all, and this is a terrifying rise at only 10 minutes in. And likewise, now he has the double buffs, and of course, Panda off of that knows where Jarvan was. No, he went down, immediately runs into his jungle, gets some deep wards down there. And speaking of wards that are going to last a while, oh, wait, was that oh, a flash? Oh, that was an interesting flash. Yeah, I don't think that was a proper click right there, but it's going to be the last breath. Third Illusion managing to outplay the Orianna, and he even gets a win wall out in time. Fuzzy Panda trying for the revenge kill, but he can't do it. Well played by the mid laner from Roosevelt High. Um, maybe he was uh, trying to avoid the tornado there. He thought that Yasuo was going to go for the ultimate. I I don't know. Obviously, that flash was misplayed. Kind of clumsy. Yeah, a little bit, little bit of quick on the draw there. <laughs> Just a little clumsy positioning right there. Um, but, I mean, technically, Yasuo, as far as the, the kill potential, that lane should already go over to, like, Orion is in this lane just to sit and to farm, which still has the 10 CS lead. That does equate to about the kill worth of gold. Like, if we go across, what? Oh, yeah, they're pretty much He's in even tower range. That was 
Not a great play right there. Wow, flashing forward. Here comes Jarvin right now. Trang, he's getting knocked all the way back away from his own box, and Sierra is just tanking up all the damage from the Thresh, but his clouds end up getting that one, and it looks like Fear My Level duking it out with TFT John, but there comes the rest of the cavalry, and they do manage to get him down. Not before the support falls. That was a misplay, and here comes Fuzzy Panda. Can he answer back? No, it's a 1v2, and he's got to get out of there as fast as he can, or not. Going right back on in, trying for the outplay. TFT John does not quite get into tower range, and that's not what Fuzzy Panda was looking for, but he does manage to get a few summoners burned for his troubles. And that was one of the sloppiest fights that I think I've seen in this game. Uh, not quite over yet. Justice Ward trading back and forth. Um, Has to be very careful from that red buff burn. Let's talk about that bot lane fight. Um, there was no reason for John to flash after he got Dragon Rage kicked just because Fuzzy Panda left, or led with his Sonic Wave, so the cooldown wasn't available yet. Like The only reason to flash there is because you're afraid that the Sonic Wave is going to connect with you and you're going to get the Execute. He didn't have... I mean, this is Cool Coat Lisa, and he's not going to kill you with a Ruby Crystal. So I think they're just... A they just assumed he had the damage. I mean, most Lee Sins do have a Lizard Elder at this point, and I think that's sort of like a weird off-putting thing to just say, oh, wait, it's full tank Lee Sin. <laughs> wait a second. He's not going to hit me. It's the mind games, Frosk. Uh, <laughs> it was strange they didn't even get him into Tower Rage, too. He was just outside of it, and I think that's what John was afraid of, and he just sort of panic flashed. And... A really important thing that you've been bringing up, um, that you were kind of touching on before that gank took place, is they've expended so many resources into this bottom lane, trying to get this Tristana back into the game and off the ground, and it really hasn't paid off. Yes, has the two kills, but the CS disadvantage alone puts them equal in gold. The Tristana will outscale the Caitlyn, but, I mean, as this dragon fight becomes more and more relevant as we continue closer to that 13-minute mark, 15-minute mark, it did it pay off? Could these resources have been better spent in that mid lane, you know, proccing the asshole ultimate? Or in the top lane, I mean... Helping yeah, out that Jace? Yeah, so many latent weapons on the side of the blue team, and it's just really curious that FFX hasn't prioritized things that have a better mid-game scaling. Instead, they've opted to try and get clouds going. Yeah, I mean, maybe that's just sort of been their MO, the kind of thing that they try to get going to win their games, but uh, they're barely ahead for their efforts in this bot side, and if you look at it, Compare that to where Rise is versus Justice Wars Jace. I mean, that just isn't what you want to be at. The one advantage they do have is that teleport, but it's down right now. If Fleetwood Park forces a dragon, this is going to be really troublesome for Roosevelt. I think it's important to note that it would be hard to gank for the top lane just because he is so far behind, but the mid lane is definitely still an advantage. And speaking oh, of mid lane, there we there go. Double team on Lee Sin. He does manage to get the safeguard away to a ward. Oh, Shockwave comes in, only connects on third illusion, and they're going to take down Fuzzy Panda. Meanwhile, on the bot lane, Trank is trying to do everything he can for his team, but Pro, he's back in the mid. He's in trouble. It's a double kill for Yasuo. Illusion doesn't even go down. Here comes the rise. Can he get the kill off? He gets the rim prison on John, manages to knock him down a peg, and he's chasing down Justice War for the secondary revenge kill. Can he do it? Forcing the flash away doesn't look it, but there are blinking health bars on all sides of Roosevelt High, and they, despite winning that fight, have to back away, can't take an objective. Very nice roam from both top laners. I like the adaptation for Justice War. Has the acceleration game, he's able to get down there. And likewise, because they know that all the resources are expended in that mid lane, they know that they can free push that tower and go aggressive on the bottom lane so they can get that free objective. King in the top now chasing Justice uh, War. I think I saw he's this fine. going on before. <laughs> But I was going to say, Justice War had no need to flash on the end of that fight. He could have just walked away. Like, if he had switched Cannon into Acceleration Gate, he would have been fine. I think flashing that wall, people are a little bit too preemptive on their flashes this time. Especially after all yeah. the cooldowns are burned. That'd be trigger fingers, for real. And they could have used those a little bit earlier on as we uh, take a look back in that one. So, it was a nice attempt at the Shockwave, too, from Pro. It just happened to be flashed out by Third Illusion, who has honestly been pretty stellar on this Yasuo play so far, and that's going to be the thing, if anything, that keeps Roosevelt in this game, as uh, Yasuo's pretty much a critical X-factor for a lot of teams. And this is why John should have been paying more attention to that mid lane, like, as soon as that Yasuo ult has been available, they should be trying to proc that every single time, and they found instant success when they tried it in that mid lane, so I'm just curious why, again, so many resources and so many ganks were uh, given to bottom lane, when you could just be feeding that Yasuo. Yeah, now the real question for Fleetwood, though, for uh, Ruby and friends, becomes how much can they rely on King in the Top to effectively carry this the longer the game goes on? Because you have a Fed Rise, but the rest of your team, not doing so hot. Yes, Orion is a utility mage, sustained damage all around anyways. Uh, Lee Sin, going full tank, is kind of your initiation. You've got a Caitlyn that should start to scale up, but not as fast as Cloud's Tristana will. 
but really, what do you have over your opponent's team? It's that Rise. That is a massive, massive champion right now, and he's actually starting to build a lot tankier, too. So I'm really curious what Fleetwood Park's strategy is in this. It's smart to go the Frozen Heart second item simply because he's facing down um, pretty much all AD. The only magic damage that they have going for them is that Morgana. Mm -hmm. So well, that's going to be a devastating it, it, power spike. It fits with Rise anyways. I mean, it's it's almost a core oh, yeah, item on him. Mana. So just why do you why do you go at, why do you go at second as opposed to the damage? Yeah, you're right. You want a lot more of that healthy sustain. Uh oh, Justice War getting caught in a line right now. They spend everything on him. Not enough to take him down, but they finally get him. Fear my level's going to manage that one. Third illusion going down as well. A little bit of help from Fuzzy Panda. And now Cloud's trying to knock everybody out of the park, but he doesn't manage to do much of anything. A two for none kill going over to the side of Fleetwood Park as they look for a move onto the mid lane, thinking about that dragon, but they want more kills first. Clouds goes down, King in the top getting himself his fifth kill of the game, and it looks like John's going to follow. It's nearly going to be that ace, and he does get the Cataclysm out, but at what cost? Absolutely nothing. Free for Fleetwood Park as they take down this tower. And this was the rationale of the cool code. The best rationale that I can give is the fact that Lee Sin is technically their only hard engage other than the, uh, the death sentence. And what I mean by that is the cacao or the insect kick, the knockback, whatever you want to call it. Although King of the no, Top... Oh, they're going for Sierra. Uh-oh. That is going to be the ace in the hole. Good night. And, uh, whoa, hello. There's a revenge for Justice War. He does manage to answer back. The Shock Blast was more damage than Pro was clearly expecting. And it looks like... Ruby and friends might have overstayed this one. They will get the two-man dragon, but that was a risky and greedy split. That said, they got a very serious gold lead here. They need to back now, disengage from this, and spend their gold, and then come back and start looking at other free objectives on the map. Yep. Namely, that mid-tier tower, since they got some decent damage there. Uh, yeah, so with a lot of the towers knocked down, and the fact that they've only lost one of their own... Uh, this is looking pretty good right now for Ruby and friends, but they have to get back in the lane. They're at risk of losing this next one. I think you pretty much have to give it up. Uh, well, you would if Third Illusion had been pushing on that tower, but they might just get back in time to save it. Never, no, never oh, mind. John's here. That's going to be a uh, tower answered back, and that's mostly just from the overstay. Nonetheless, uh, you could definitely call that hashtag worth. It's now just about what Ruby and friends are going to do with themselves. Again... Are they going to go back to their lane phase and kind of farm out the jungle camps, farm out the free waves? Are they going to focus their power mid lane and start taking more objectives and continuing on the siege before, you know, Tristana and Yasuo start taking off and before the poke of Jeez starts to become an element? Um, I feel well, like they the, should siege in team fight just because Rise is so powerful right now. Yeah, I, I think that's that's a fair point. And to, talk, to touch on Jace as well, that's really, really their most potent poke weapon. And... As he moves away from the Sonic Wave. The Shock Blasts are just going to get harder and harder hitting, as you saw earlier on. Pro clearly didn't expect that level of damage. The Armor Pen coming out of the Brutalizer also very effective. And yes, he was down a little bit due to having to land against King in the top. But that scaling will start to get out of control. And that's kind of going to be FFX's big secret weapon. Or maybe not so secret of a weapon at this point. I think it's also very telling by the fact that King of the Top fast pushed that wave as opposed to slow pushing it. It's not like as a rise he chose to just sit up there and just passively farm and to con continue to stack his tier and work towards his Seraph Embrace power spike. Um, so that does tell me that Ruby and friends want to continue to push their lead as far as objectives are concerned. Let's talk uh, tier stacking as well too because we have a little scoreboard here. It's going to be 606 on King in the Top's. Whereas, uh, well, I guess we can't talk about it right now because John managed to get himself caught. Uh-oh, that's a whole lot of damage, but they did find clouds around the side. This is a 3v3. Fear my level in the back line. Third illusion coming in now. Fuzzy Panda and Trank are in trouble. Fear my level goes down. That's clouds getting the shutdown gold. And they are chasing on away Fleetwood Park from this one. The shockwave comes in. That's a whole lot of damage. They do get a hookup, but it only goes onto the golem. Troll jungle camps keeping them safe, and Trank is in a lot of trouble. They are chasing him down. He gets a play backwards, doing a valiant effort. But he will, in the end, go down. That's the bot lane. Fleetwood Park fallen in that engagement for none. Uh, again, very, very messy engage and counter engage from both hey, these Pyra. teams. Hey, Pyra. You want to do some math? Yeah, let's go for it. Okay, that was a um, effectively a 4v5. So look at how much gold Ruby and friends are ahead. Now check how much gold King of the Top is worth. He's worth 8,000 gold. Um, there is zero reason that they should ever be fighting without him. That is a 5-0-3 Rise. Like you said, he's the most fed member of the team other than the 4-2-1 Caitlyn, but the Rise is going to be bringing that AoE massive power spike damage um, that we would mm -hmm. expect from a team fight. So that was the major flaw right there from Ruby and Friends, picking fights, trying to make something happen without their core member. 
Yeah, I, I think they got a little complacent and thought, hey, we can go ahead and take this pick off. It looked like a numbers advantage, but then all of a sudden, Yasuo and Jarvan kind of just away. came out of nowhere. They they picked a fight without a gold lead, if that makes sense. The yeah, gold lead is entirely closest, on that champion. <laughs> the second closest champion is not that far behind. You have Caitlyn worth about 7,600 gold, but still, you're right. When The AD carry is a special case because you have to protect them. You can't just... You know, count that as as a brawling champion at all. And here we go. Here's more fights happening. They're gonna find Sierra right here, and here comes Pro as well. But once again, these jungle fights have not turned out well for Fleetwood Park. Maybe that's about to change right now. They get the knockback, the kickback. Sierra's in trouble. Gets the ultimate off. That's gonna be Pro taken down, John. And all things are going haywire. Third Illusion getting himself a kill onto the Thresh, and they are answering back in kind. King of the top. He gets himself one more kill dominating, but he's got no health bar to speak of. Shock Blast just barely missing him, and they're on the chase right now. Can Roosevelt High pull this one off? They do get one more hit. Clouds gets himself a spree for this one, and Clouds going forward for a double. Does answer back on a king of the top. It's so far a three for three. Will they get more shutdown gold? Going over to Fear My Level as they answer back onto Clouds. Blinking health bars all around Sierra. That was a little bit too far forward, and he does overstay. It's a three for four. Pro still on the chase. Shock Blast balls. I don't know who's going to win this one. Looks like it's a double kill for Oriana. Double buff transfer complete he should have auto attacked one more time before he turned um cannon <clears throat> and then he would have won that so that was just a mechanical misstep from him right there uh bigger was misstep though close though was again picking the team fight without having your your gold there that time around caitlin wasn't available uh, lucky for ruby and friends the team fight was elongated enough that they were able to chase back so that caitlin could walk from base and get involved in the back half of that fight but they have this gold lead and they have this advantage and they're continuously fighting 4v5 and just like throwing it to the wind. They're getting punished for it. Yeah, in this time they had King in the top, but once he made his appearance, he took so much damage on the backside of that fight that he just had to run away with the blinking health bar and that was just clouds rocket jumping forward to finish him off. It could have been a lot better for Roosevelt had they backed off after that, but I think they committed very hard to the chase. And you're right though, Fleetwood Park, despite being in the lead, is taking these trades even or slightly losing, and that's really troubling. They're closing the, the gold lead slightly. It's still a pretty big deficit, but... Yeah. I wanna, let's, let's put it this way. I, I feel like FFX is playing smarter. They're not maximizing their smarter. efficiency. FFX is playing relatively smarter from a disadvantageous position, and Ruby and Friends are playing less smarter from a more advantageous position. Reckless. And it kind of turns out <laughs> to these crazy fights that at last, like, five minutes. Speaking of oh, crazy speaking fights. of. Hello. Oh, no lantern for you. Fuzzy Panda taking all his health bar and damage. Does get the safeguard off, but Clouds will finish him off all the same. Trank trying to make something happen here, but he's got no backup. Down he goes. Third illusion. Flashing away to try to avoid the damage. King of the top now. Juking it out with John, and he will finish him off. That is still a terrifying rise. Clouds jumping away from danger. Sierra not so lucky. Has to walk it up, but can't get away. That's a double kill for Fear My Level, and they take yet another three for two. But it still looks close. And again, this time around, it was Justice War who wasn't there for the party. And again, another 4v5 that swings in favor of the, of the team who has the numbers advantage. Imagine yep, that. That <laughs> is kind of the, uh, the story of this game. It, it's just been like really back and forth. But at the end of the day, it's what's on paper, right? The other issue was uh, so many ultimates were expended on the Quillcoat Lee Sin. Versus... Yeah, it, it, it was a catch at first, but because he's so tanky, you can't just end him quickly. And you're right, I think that was a mistake. You can't have something like the Yasuo ultimate, especially when you're competing against the Shockwave. Like, if the Yasuo ultimate only hits one person, but the Shockwave hits... I mean, at that point, Shockwave just has to hit two people, and you're already... you used your abilities better. Mm -hmm. So, that that was a huge factor right there. On a, on a totally ADD note, I want to talk about Illusions and Clouds builds, because they're not just exactly the same, which is kind of to be expected, but they're in the <laughs> same order. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Um, it's also funny that since Third Illusion went for the Infinity Edge second item as opposed to the um, the Bork Shiv, it tells me that he wants to team fight, that he's looking more for the initial burst damage as opposed to like the sustain fights. Uh, unfortunately, though, he's not really finding those. Mm, and especially yeah, when they have like the, the Tristana on their like their team composition, the fact that it needs more time to ramp up a little bit more. I, I think was kind of a curious build path. I mean, either way, it, there's flexibility right there, but... Yeah. Well, the more that these item paths get fleshed out, the quicker we should see 
uh, these fights even going, which is kind of crazy considering how fast the damage has been flying left and right. Uh, however, I gotta still give the edge to Fleetwood in this one just because I, I feel like Tank Lee Sin is slightly better than Tank Jarvan in this composition. And that's like, that seems to be the factor on which these fights are swinging, like how fast the tank can last, or how long the tank can last, rather. Well, maybe not long if it's Fuzzy Panda taking on Justice War. Run away! Ooh, Shock Blast not connecting. Jarvan should be the better tank, though, just because he scales a bit better with, you know, the stats that he's being given. Uh, that's, that's a fair point. Oh, hello, there's a hook right there. Trank trying to force a fight for his team right now, but this is another 4v5. They will blow up their delusion. There's the shockwave. It's massive, and it's Pro getting himself yet another kill for Unstoppable. And they are going to get the Ace in the hole out onto Clouds. His health bar is rapidly melting. And there goes King in the top. One more pick off, and Justice War realizing he was not where he needed to be. That was a perfect 4 for none for Fleetwood Park. And they'll take out an inhibitor for here. And the difference there is technically that was a 4v4, but the difference was is that finally they had all of their important members with the team, and they actually engaged with just the Rise uh, Flash W, which if the Flash is available, Rise can be used as a hard engage tool, so you don't need the lease in there. Um, and, and unfortunately, Jace was across map, so they didn't have their disengage tool with the acceleration gate. But like massively, yeah. you already see as soon as all fed members are there, the Caitlyn and the Rise, these team fights are just snowballed out of control. Yeah, and it was a, a beautiful catch as well. Not to mention Pro uh, landing that Shockwave 3 members. With the Death Cap and Void Staff, he's able to actually do a significant deal of burst. And that is just marvelous to look at. Those fights are really swinging in favor of Ruby and friends right now. And this is trouble for Roosevelt High if they want to stay relevant in this game. Massive gold deficit. 11,000. Let's see if they can keep it in the park right now. So at this point, Fleetwood can do whatever they want, wherever they want. I think that... Uh... Roosevelt needs to start abusing the teleport a little bit more, as well as the split push potential of Jace. Mm -hmm. Just because since King of the Top doesn't, and try to get a number assist advantage where, again, Rise isn't available since he's such a huge... Because effectively, at this point in time, Justice is worth so less to a team, to his team, than Rise is to Ruby and friends. So if he could effectively trade that, not just kill Rise, but just get him away from the team fight and get his team like a, a fair 4v4, I think would be the best case scenario for them. Yeah, that would really be ideal, but I think they're realizing on the side of Fleetwood that they can send somebody like Fuzzy Panda to deal with him. And you mentioned how Jarvan will have a little bit better scaling tank stats, even though it's still, you know, it's sort of the early stages of the late game right now. Fuzzy Panda is still fairly effective, and he showed that he was able to keep Justice War at bay, and that's, you know, considering a melee on range champion, that's pretty impressive. And now, well, here we go. Ruby and Friends making a move up over towards this bear, and all five members converging on it, and nobody from Roosevelt High is daring to get within range. This is going to be uncontested. Free Baron, Trishana was bottom, gave them the, uh, the power to do that right there. It looks like Third Illusion up. Oh, he's going to walk away. The other key thing about Justice War not being with his team, if they wanted to split push, is he Speaking is entirely... The wave clear. Um, Yasuo yep. doesn't Goodbye. have safe wave clear. Ooh, that that <laughs> looks like it hurt. Tristana does have the static shiv, and yeah, Yasuo can kill minion waves, but he has to be on them. So effectively, now you're competing against tormented soil shiv proc from Trist, which should mean that that uh, an objective will fall here. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a shockwave pro showing how he can burst. And this is all sorts of trouble right now for Roosevelt High School as they try to stay alive. Another inhibitor turret falling. It should be able to take this inhib out for absolutely free right now. Justice Warren Cloud still on the cooldown time. We're back at Fountain. Can they end it right now? They take another inhibitor. They look to end this game. Trank taking a lot of poke here. Third illusion, though. He's no slouch answering back. Can they answer with this kill? Here comes John. Here comes the ultimate. It's Pro. He comes in with the godlike kill. And they take down one Nexus turret. Looking for the next one. It's only Sierra and Justice War still standing. That's another double kill. Oh. Over to Pro. Justice War Sierra, can they hold the line? I don't think so. This Nexus is falling so fast. Justice, he's caught up. Goodbye, good night. And that's going to be game in 30 minutes and 15 seconds. Over to Fleetwood Park. Ruby and friends, take the game. Ruby and Fred did a great job uh, snowballing their lanes individually off of their skill. And then from that, it took them, you know, there was kind of a, a sketchy moment in the middle there where they picked two team fights without, you know, having either Caitlyn or Ryze having their big, strong uh, gold leads right there. But as soon as they figured out, hey, guys, we just need to fight as five. We, need, we can siege now, recognizing that they had the power. They did a great job closing the game quickly and efficiently. Yeah, once they got together, you're right. It was a completely different team 
from this strange 4v5 jungle skirmish squad. Uh, but all the same, big props to a few members, especially on Roosevelt. I, I think Third Illusion did a fantastic job of revenging in a lot of those fights. I think Clouds got to a place that was really comfortable for him. The issue was they neglected a lot of the rest of the team. And at the end of it, it, it really seemed like TFT John, for example, Justice Ward, kind of were just there to soak damage, which is not really all that great when you consider that their own damage threats just, just weren't matching the level of uh, even Rise. Just king of the top. What a fantastic Rise play from him. Almost solo a good chunk of the game. They just didn't utilize their composition correctly. Obviously, with the Jace, you're using that to disengage, which if you look across the board from uh, Ruby and Friends, they don't have a lot of hard engage options. We talked about this during the game. It's either the Flash Rude in prison, a Death Sentence, or an Insect, like a, a, a Lease and Kickback. That's it. That's their only way to catch you. So an Acceleration Gate effectively cancels that entirely out. Unfortunately, neither team, I'm not even going to just say just FFX or Ruby and Friends, but neither team were really, you know, cohesive on being together and making sure that they were utilizing everything that they had brought with all of these champions. Um, and fortunately for Ruby and Friends, they just, you know, figured that out a little bit quicker. Yep. So uh, with that comes to an end our, this week's varsity match, rather. And uh, it was a pretty interesting match. In the end, I, th I think it came down to the simple outclassing. It wasn't just king in the top but he certainly played a big factor for his team and once they were able to group as five they were able to push down the middle and end it all so thanks everybody for watching this week's match over at high school esports league again big thanks big shout out to our sponsors our dogecoin the rest of the wonderful shibas all over the internet as well as shiba mint Co coinplay io moolah sochin and dogecoin ball so thank you for watching once again i'm pirate technics she is frost grin and guys we will see you next week